Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. This is the second video in a series where I'm talking about using generative design for three-axis milling. In my last video, I started with an inventor assembly and picked on one part and pushed it to Fusion where we started to create some of the geometry that we'll use in the generative design study. Now I'm ready to jump into the generative design environment and start taking a look at setting up my study. They've kind of changed the way the pricing is for this. If you get this message here, they're just offering to let you have a seven day trial of unlimited or you can buy an unlimited package. I'm just going to cancel this and basically it'll cost me cloud credits per study. So in this example, I already have Basically, my preserves and obstacles are already, already defined. I'm going to add a couple obstacles here in just a moment. But first, I always like to just start defining my preserves and obstacles. So these two links on either end are going to be my preserves. Those have to be part of my final design. My obstacles that I created were these that basically block out space so they don't interfere or the, the 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 result doesn't interfere with my mating assembly. And looking at the initial design, I said, hey, this actually might make a good starting shape. So I'm going to define that as my starting shape. If you're anything like me, I like to have symmetric components. And so I've actually enabled a setting that allows me to play around with this symmetry plane setting. I believe this is still in beta phase when I'm recording this video. But I'm going to use this XY plane here of my, my origin, which runs right down through the middle of the part. I'm going to define that as a symmetry plane for me. There's one more obstacle that I need to create, or actually two, and it's the pins that hold this arm into the link and then the same thing over here. So if we jump over to Inventor real quick and go back to the assembly, you'll see that these pins, we'll do a quick inspection on them, see how what the diameter on them are. So that's one inch in terms of diameter between this face and this face, about an eighth of an inch tall. So if we go back to Fusion, I'm going to jump into Edit Model. Here in Edit Model, I have a nice tool called Connector Obstacle. It's really good for creating obstacles for things like pins and screws and things like that. So I'm going to go to my Connector Obstacle. I have to pick where the shaft starts. And then I can pick a shaft end. And then here, it's going to give me the shaft diameter, the shaft length. Even though this is like a pin, I'm going to just add the bolt head. And you can see here I can add the diameter and that should be, we'll make it a little bit oversized in terms of diameter. That was a one inch diameter. We'll make it this a little bit oversized at one and an eighth. In terms of the height, I'm gonna actually oversize that as well at a quarter of an inch. And I can actually add one to both sides. I'm gonna say okay. So it automatically adds basically an obstacle there. I'll repeat that on the other side. That looks good. I'll say OK. Now if I finish Edit Model, you'll see that those are already added as red and added as obstacles. If I expand this out, you'll see I have four bodies that are my obstacles under this obstacle geometry. Now it's time for me to look at my load cases and determine what I want to do there. The first thing I'm going to look at is gravity under loads. It's actually running the wrong direction. It's running through the part. If this is going to be an arm, then most likely it's going to be running vertically down, at least in the resting or the stored position. So I'm going to edit the gravity position. And I'm going to change it so it runs normal to this face. And that yellow inside of that yellow box is a little hard to see, but it is in there pointing vertically down to the bottom. 
Now I'm going to turn off my, just turn the visibility off of my obstacle geometry so I can do my constraints and loads a little bit better. I'm going to put on a structural constraint. I'm going to use these two holes here as being fixed. There might be a better way to kind of solve this or more accurately represent this. I'm just trying to keep this fairly simple. We'll just kind of say this is held there. And then for my loads, I'm going to put a force. We'll say it's going to be straight down. Make sure we get the right angle here. We'll say 90 in the X. And we'll say maybe it's 50 pounds. And that will be on both of these here. And I'll say OK. And let's say I want to have a couple different load cases where I have that at slightly different angles. So I'm going to clone this load case. And I'm going to activate it. And I'm going to change the load, the force 2. Maybe we'll make it at a 45 degree angle. And I'll clone load case 1 again. Activate it. And we'll just change the angle to negative 45. So it's just basically running at different different angles there. We'll go ahead and save this real quick before I get too far. Okay, so the next thing for us to do is look at our objectives. You can see minimize mass. And a safety factor, let's maybe go with 2.5 as our safety factor. And I'm not really looking for anything else, so we'll just go ahead and say OK. The manufacturing method here, this is the, the kind of the key thing, that the main reason I'm doing this is I want to take a look at three-axis milling as a solution or the manufacturing method for the part we're going to make here. So I'm going to turn off the unrestricted, I'm going to turn off the additive, here I'm on three axis milling and we'll actually lessen the tool diameter. I'm going to use a quarter of an inch. The shoulder length of being 1.6 is fine. Head diameter, eh, maybe, maybe I'll lessen that a little bit too. This is where you want to accurately represent what you have. So I might not have a tool like this. I might want to make sure this is matching a tool. Or if I don't have a tool like this, that I'm willing to purchase what I'm what I'm talking about here. I actually might leave that diameter as is. But let's take a look at the setup or the tool direction. These six here are going to be the orientations I plan or the setups that I plan on having in this design. So in my case here, I'm thinking that the positive and negative Z, if I'm looking at my my box here, my view cube here, Z is running through the part up and down. I would think that I would have some sort of tool axis or tool setup where it'd be coming in the positive and negative Z. But I also need to worry about these openings here. So if I kind of rotate this way, my Y would be the direction that that would be cut. So I could either use positive and negative Y, or if I think, oh, I'm just going to have a tool long enough to go through the entire height of this, I can do that. I don't know it's going to matter a ton, so I actually just activate both. Notice that with this being X, X runs the same direction as my my gravity is running through the part the lengthwise. There's really not going to be anything great there. I guess if I wanted to do these pockets in the X versus the Y, I could do that as well. It's just kind of what you want to do, what machines you have, what's going to be your strategy. I'm going to leave everything else off. I'm going to go to my materials. And I'm going to set this to milling. You can see they've already picked an aluminum, and that's probably a decent one there. But maybe I want to consider a stainless steel just as an alternative. So I'm going to come down here to my fusion library, come down to my metals, and I'll find the stainless steel. 
Yeah, it looks good. Now I'll add it to the study materials. I'll close. And if I look at my pre-check, you can see everything passes. The pre-check, uh, I'm not gonna do the previewer. I actually tried it on the first time I ran through this here, but because I had the symmetry plane, you can see it doesn't like, you know, the previewer isn't really compatible with the symmetry, symmetry plane. Uh, so that's why I was gonna kind of skip it there. I can go ahead and hit generate. You can see here because I'm doing a, uh, I don't have a, the seven day trial or the uh, purchased extension of unlimited studies. It's gonna ask for 33, 33 cloud credits. At one point, there were so many cloud credits came with each seat. I actually have a lot because I deal with tr uh, training center where we have a lot of seats of software. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit generate study. I'm gonna push this to the cloud. It's gonna start generating results or showing me results here as soon as it has some ready to go. But uh, we'll give this some time to think through those. And again, it will kind of show these thumbnails as they progress, but it's, it's gonna take you know, maybe an hour or two. We really only have one manufacturing method and two materials. So we're really only gonna get two outcomes based off of what we selected. So we'll give it some time to think about it and we'll come back to this. That's all for this video. In the next video, we're gonna look at outcomes. We're gonna generate a file for an outcome and then we're going to prepare it for the CNC program. We're gonna maybe have to do a little bit of cleanup. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.